I've seen several comments on my videos about how old the earth is or what a day is like, as God describes it in Genesis. People are quoting Peter when he says, a day is like a thousand years to God. So does that mean that there were 6,000 years? Or is this saying that the day is a unmeasured or unknowable amount of time? And so this is a way to understand and to interpret the beginning of Genesis as stating not six literal 24-hour days, but rather long time periods and that God could have created in millions of years. Before we jump in, welcome to the Geologian channel. My name is Joshua Woodard, and what I do here is I try to bridge the gap between you and your Bible by answering tough questions like these so you grow closer to you, to God and your walk with Him. So first things first, I want to jump right into the passage that has been quoted and that people are talking about so we can see what does it actually mean. Okay, so the verse that is being read is 2 Peter 3, 8. I'm just going to read it here for you in ESV. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, or like a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. And so a lot of times, and I've seen this in the comments, this is the only verse that's quoted. And as I've heard many apologists say, and I think it's a great understanding of Scripture, there are no Bible verses. Verses were added later, and it's a one-part piece of the entire scripture. So we should read the rest of the chapter probably, maybe even more to get the full context. So if you go up to the beginning of the chapter, he's referencing a second letter here. This is now the second letter that I'm writing to you, beloved. And so he is talking about scoffers. Scoffers will come in the last days with scoffing, follow the, following their own sinful desires. They will say, what is the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all things are continuing as they were from the beginning of creation. And so they're saying, no, no, Jesus isn't going to come back. This end is not going to come back. This is not how this is. These are people who are scoffing, mocking against the truth that Jesus has taught. We keep going in verse 5. For they deliberately overlook this fact that the heavens existed long ago, and the earth was formed out of water and through water by the word of God. And that by means of these, the world that then existed was deluged with water and perished. But by the same word, the heavens and the earth that now exist are stored up for fire, being kept until the day of judgment and the destruction of the ungodly. And so then that comes to verse 8, where he says the day is like a thousand years. The Lord is not slow, verse 9, the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. And he continues and he talks about the end times, but the point here is that he is making a statement against this scoffing attitude that Jesus is not coming back. He hasn't come back yet. He's not going to. It's always been creation. Nothing's ever stopped it. And so then he actually says that's wrong. Remember, he says they overlook the fact that God made the world. Remember, the world began and it was formless and void and there was just the deeps and that God formed the, wor the world out of that water. And then after that, he even says, and not everything has been the same from before that. The world was then once again brought to a watery, desolate place with the flood. That's, this is him referencing Noah's flood that God judged the world. So yes, God has in the past judged the world. The world came to an end, so to speak, and that it's going to happen again, this time with fire, not with water. Jesus is going to come back. Judgment Day is on its way. But then he's answering the question, why hasn't he come back yet then? And he says, don't overlook this fact. This is verse 8 again. The Lord, one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. He's not slow. It's not like he is just taking a long time because he has to get there. Like he is just not able to go any faster. It's not He's not slow to fulfill his promise, as some people are considering it to be slow, but rather he's just patient. He's not coming back yet. There is a time when he is going to come back. And the reason why it's not right now is, is that he doesn't want any to perish, that he wishes everyone should reach repentance. That is the point. And then he's even referencing that no one's going to know when it's going to come up. The day of the Lord will come like a thief. This sounds like Jesus saying a thief in the night, right? It's just going to happen. So is this saying that creation is, everything was created in 6,000 year periods? Because it says one day is like a thousand years. It also says a thousand years is one day. So is that what this is saying? Well, first and foremost, this is not this is not Peter making a, an argument about how long everything took. So it's kind of hard to fit that context into it. 
So first and foremost, the context of this is not him describing in great detail how everything was created. He does reference creation in saying, this is how God created it, and it became water again. And he's making a step-by-step -step argument going from the beginning to God's judgment, and so it's going to be like that again. But this is not him describing how long God took. That's not the context. It's not him saying, well, this, you know, it took 6,000 years. That's not, so this verse is hard to be able to interpret something it's not meant to interpret. But there's also one more part, is that he's actually quoting a passage of scripture. This is the passage that Peter is quoting. It's Psalm 90, and I just want to read through it with you guys really quick. Starting in verse 1, Lord, well, let's back up just a minute. Uh, so here it says, it's a prayer of Moses, the man of God. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You return man to dust and say, return, O children of man, for a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past, or as a watch in the night. And so another description of this is exactly what Peter was saying. For a thousand years in your sight are but a day or a thousand years is like a day. This is the verse he is describing here. Or it's a watch in the night. You sweep them away as with a flood. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. And in the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and it withers. For we are brought to an end by your anger, by your wrath you are dismayed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. For all our days pass under your wrath. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The years of our life are 70, or even by reason of strength, 80, yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone, and we fly away. And so he continues to talk about how their life is is quick, and that they are brought into toil. Um, but there should, And then he's asking God at the end, you know, bring favor upon us, who dwells in the shadow of the Most High, will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And he keeps going through this. So this is a very beautiful psalm of what Moses is describing God's eternity and what he is like and mankind's very brief moment on earth. He says 70 years, maybe 80. Like we don't last very long. We are like the grass that withers and disappears. But you, God, have been from everlasting to everlasting, the one who created everything and that we can find protection under you and that we can be given life. And it. And so he's just drawing upon God and the contrast between men. And so it does briefly discuss creation again, sort of like Peter's did. But notice this, for a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday. So just one day, right? When it is past or as a watch in the night. So is a day like a thousand years or is it like a watch in the night? So if, if this is saying that a day to God is a thousand years, or a thousand years is a day, and so we should read this back. It also says it's like a watch in the night, which is just a couple of hours, or possibly just the night period. So does that mean also that one day in the creation account is four hours, eight hours, just 12, less than all of those? Is this being a literal translation or interpretation back into Genesis saying that what those days are like? And the answer here is no. You'd have to try and pick and choose here. And this is what Peter is grabbing on. He is pulling it back saying that God is eternal. He is not being slow. He is almighty. He is just being patient. Peter is trying to reference this to get that point across. That God will come back. There will be judgment day. Jesus will return. He's not being slow. He's just being patient. To him it is nothing to wait a thousand years. To him, it's he's eternal. And so this is not how we should go back and say, well, God created in 6,000 years or 7,000 years, although we can't know it. Maybe it's just an unknowable amount of time. I've had videos before where I've described evening and morning cycles showing that it's an exact day or Exodus 20 verse 11, where Moses explicitly states that God created in six days and rested on the seventh. So should the Israelites work for six days and rest on the seventh. It would be preposterous. It would be ridiculous to say that instead he's saying we should work for 6,000 years and rest for a 1,000. That's not what it's saying. Moses interpreted it to be six days resting on the seventh, a normal work week. This likewise should not be used to interpret it as such. 
That's just not what the passage is saying. So when I read this, again, this is not saying that God created in 6,000 years. Instead, it, it's just focusing on God's eternal, almighty being, and that he's making an argument against the statement that God's not coming back and that things have always been the same. When we read the whole chapter of 2 Peter 3, it's pretty easy to see this is not what this is describing. And this is a good reminder that, again, there are no Bible verses. We should be reading the full context of everything so we understand the view and we're not reading our views into Scripture. So I hope this has helped bridge a gap between you and your Bible. And I, I hope that if you have more tough questions, you're going to come back to this channel. Leave a comment below if you have one. I'd love to hear it. I'd love to have a conversation with you or even make a video about it. So if you enjoyed this content, leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you can get more content just like this. So until next time, friends, God bless. Mm -hmm.